Hey guys, in this week's video, I'm finally gonna tell you about my first fight. I know I've been talking about it for like almost a year now, but it was just a lot to process for me. Okay, some things I learned from my fight. Number one, nobody cares. Like, like I said, fighting for some reason, it feels like so much about your pride and who you are. But at the end of the day, really nobody cares <laughs> that you fought or that you won or that you lost. People care about you and that you're okay on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course that you're happy. But like, people don't look at you differently because of how you perform. And if they do, of course, those people are not your friends. You as an athlete, you make such a big deal about everything. <laughs> um, but other people are not gonna care to that extent and they're not gonna change how they feel about you. At the same time though, I feel like I learned to understand who actually cares about me. Um, because those people showed me that they care about how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis um, not just in regards to fighting but like how that affects me on a day-to-day -day basis and I remember I was surprised by which teammates hugged me after um, like I lost my fight backstage I expected other teammates to kind of be there for me they weren't teammates that I didn't expect there to be there for me in any way, shape, or form, like show me they actually care about me. So while most people like don't care about your the outcome, you actually get to see who cares about you for real. Like I said, there are people like there were people in the gym calling me champ before I was going off to the tournament. And those people didn't even talk to me when I returned. Like they to this day, some of those people have not talk to me again um, most people like it's really easy to support somebody when um, when you're winning when you're being successful when you're being happy um, but people that truly care about you they care about you even when you lose even when you're in a negative headspace or s sad depressed that you're worse and something that I also learned was Vulnerability is strength. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Brene Brown's books, and I think it was like in her book Daring Greatly, she was talking a lot about shame and how number one, everybody feels shame, but the way to lessen the effect that shame has on you is by sharing it with others um, because it's so powerful and it's so scary. Um, it's actually a sign of power that you're sharing your vulnerability, that you're sharing your your worst moments with people, and that actually heals you a lot and allows you not to cl like cling to the to the feelings of shame. And actually, I agree with this. Like the, when the times that people have allowed me to express myself about like my fight and my shortcomings, you know, whatever. Like those moments, I do feel like. I can heal those wounds a lot better so that's something i learned through this entire experience like it's okay to feel negative like negative emotions um but the way to heal them is by sharing them and by opening opening up to people that care about you um don't open up to people that don't care about you because that's just not intelligent like you know like you share your Brené Brown explains it like you share your um, you share your shame story with people that have earned the right to hear it. So, or not the right, but the privilege maybe to hear it. Anyway, is that making sense? Like, <laughs> if you want to heal your wounds, like share them with people you trust. The biggest lesson for me in this entire experience of my first fight, of losing my first fight, was about power because it's very interesting. I've always been very um, fascinated by powerful people especially i've said it before in my previous videos i've always been very interested in like revolutionary people because i feel that they're powerful and i feel like i've struggled a lot through my life in feeling powerlessness and that's why i make my videos and my art i want them to be about i want them to be empowering because i want to help other people that like me they're trying to understand their own power and express their power 
And one small lesson that I learned in this was that you need to give yourself the power to do whatever you feel that it is that you want to do. A big reason that I had so much doubt in going to this first fight was because I felt like I didn't see like people telling me like, oh, you're gonna do so well or or you, you're, I don't know, you're, I don't know, you're gonna win or like I was expecting somebody else to tell me those things that, but in actuality, it's like, I'm the one that needs to tell myself those things and most people are not gonna understand the things that you really want and most people are gonna tell you their own fears most people are gonna buy into what you do like when you're actually doing it which by then you have you have to have like i don't know if that makes sense but like i didn't realize that but not making up my mind and deciding like I am a good fighter and I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z even if those things didn't happen because I didn't think about it that way number one, other people can't think about me that way and number two, then I can't actually carry it out because it needs to exist in my head before and I feel like I've said this before in videos but I just didn't understand uh, how it applied to me in the, spectrum, in the arena of martial arts like, I had to just know, like, have a deep knowing of my own power and and why I do this and what I want to do and what I'm going to do and what I can do. And it's not about listening to other people or waiting for other people to give me permission or reward me, like, in any way or validate me, I guess. Um, and for me, that's such a big lesson in authentic power and something I actually... Um, heard that I kind of feel like applies to me in regards to this experience is like life will give you experiences that you need to grow and I feel like that's why life gave me this experience like I needed to lose this fight to truly be I needed to lose this fight in order to actually truly be powerful and be in command of my own power if I were to win this fight, I would have no reason to like find my power. Does that make sense? <laughs> because you know what I mean. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but for me, that's the biggest takeaway from this fight: that I am powerful, and I'm the one that needs to tell myself how powerful I am. Uh, it's not gonna come from anybody else, and even if other people are, were to tell me those things. If I don't believe it, if I don't tell myself that, it's not gonna happen. Another lesson that I learned is like, duh, I can fight. <laughs> I laugh because it's so dumb looking back. Like, I do this every fucking day. Like, of course I can kickbox. Like, that's I train every day, like, to so that I'm capable of competing in a kickboxing fight. Like, for some reason, the word fight has such a like huge and overpowering connotation of like street life and i know i'm not in any way like street you know but it's just martial arts it's just another sport and like i said i just had so much doubt about the everything and once i saw myself on video i was like i remember just being in shock after my fight first of all after my fight i was so high on adrenaline still that I wasn't even sad, I was just, I literally had like the biggest smile on my face and I was just like, I was just so high, I, I was so happy that I did it and that like it happened and then um, I watched the video immediately after and I was like, I couldn't believe that I was throwing punches, throwing kicks, throwing knees, clinching, I, I still kind of look at it and I'm like, I still low-key can't believe that's me like every time I watch the video or I watch a I look at a picture I'm like that's me like I can do that <laughs> like I did it like of course I can like I said it's ridiculous because I do this every day but because I've never like been in a street fight it just felt so far away and I just honestly learned like it's pretty much the same thing that it is in the gym it's just 
there's adrenaline and the person in front of you is not gonna stop the way that I, that of course your training partner is gonna stop when they feel like maybe they hurt you or i don't know you know what i mean is but i realize like it's really just like in the gym for the most part the last lesson and the most well the second most important one but I don't know if, I don't know. I can't decide if it's the most important or second most uh, important is to just have fun. Like I've talked about this, I think in another video where like, I always start a hobby because it's so much fun. And then all my hobbies become work and they stop being fun because I need to be better and need, need to be better and need to challenge myself. Now I have expectations and goals. A lot of people like, even like, my family like they don't understand why i do kickboxing because i'm like i said i've never been a violent person why would i do kickboxing but it's like my first kickboxing class i just felt like number one it was like dance so i loved it and then my first class um at the gym that i'm at now at dynamics i literally left i left the gym and I remember just laughing hysterically um, in the car on the way home and at home trying to like eat and make food. I was just laughing hysterically because I, I just realized like I was feeling joy. I was having so much fun. And unfortunately as adults, like we don't really have that, that much fun. Like, yeah, we can go out and drink and like the, there's really not much that else that you can do to have fun like yes you can hang out with your friends but most of the time you hang out with your friends as adults like it revolves around alcohol and like i mentioned in my reintroduction video like there was a point in time where like i really got sick of just like drinking and partying so when i found kickboxing it was like it was just so much fun and it was just that i just felt joy and that's why i continue to go to the gym the day after and the day after and the day after but like i said like the days go on and on and on and you forget why you started that hobby and uh, the first thing that i realized when i got back home from the tournament because you know i was in arizona and i live in la i literally realized like at no point in my training camp did i ever even have fun therefore i couldn't have fun in the ring because I was, I was just so scared and nervous that it was my first fight which is okay and expected um, but but the most important thing that draws me to kickboxing is that it's fun so when I came back and I started training that's why I started doing jiu-jitsu again well again but like I had only done a little bit now, now of course that I lost my first fight I'm training with even like much more like focus and like rage <laughs> um, but I just really felt like I needed it I needed to have fun again and that's why I started doing jiu-jitsu um, and it actually worked it reminded me so much of when I started doing kickboxing and how fun it is and you know discovering your body how to move it um, so yeah so now that I'm like nine months it will was it, not, it was probably like 10 months ago 10 months later like most of my classes i go with the intention of having fun now like like now i feel calm now like now I'm, I'm starting to believe in myself and just know like i've gotten so much better it's just like and i'm at peace because i know i've gotten so much better I literally just tell myself to have fun from now on and that's really what's most important because if you win or you lose the fight it matters that you were having fun and that in your training you had fun and that's really like for me what matters most like I always say the day that I'm not having fun like I'm not gonna come back to the gym and like there's so many emotions in fighting like related to fear anxiety stress you need to be having fun like for there for there to be something rewarding for you to come back every day so that for me was a big lesson just have fun like that's why i do this <laughs> like i said i just i forget like with all my hobbies like same thing with painting like 
you know, you start having expectations, goals, you want to challenge yourself, but at the end of the day, you got there because you were having fun, so just continue having fun. Lastly, will I fight in the future? Hell yes. I am coming into the tournament with a vengeance <laughs> this year. Like, like I said, I just, I want to have fun and I want to do what I do every day in the gym. Uh, well, that should actually been another lesson. <laughs> Let me go back. A big lesson that I learned um, is that I just need to learn to be myself. Not learn, I just need to be myself. When I was training for my first fight, it's like I felt like I had to be somebody else, like, um, and I know why, I, because I'm a dancer, like I said <laughs> a few times now in this video, I started out as a ballet dancer, I'm very good with technique, like that's what I love about dancing, I just, I love like perfect technique, that's what ballet is about. So what I struggled with when I started kickboxing was power and aggression, which, you know, are very interconnected. But not necessarily the same thing, right? Um, and so my coach would tell me, like, if you want to fight, hit the heavy bag after class because you just don't have power right now, so I need you to hit harder. Now, what happened is I internalized that feedback. And of course, I carried out the advice of hitting the heavy bag after class. But what I didn't realize I did was that I hung on to that you have no power. And I would go and hit the heavy bag every day and would be like, I have no power, I don't have power, I need to hit the heavy bag, I, I need power, I need power. Fast forward to going, now I'm going to a tournament and in the foundation of what I had been telling myself for the past year was I have no power. So so that's I guess why I felt like I have to be somebody else, like I have to develop, um, I have to develop more in these areas that I felt like I don't have, but I actually now, of course, looking back, <laughs> I am aggressive, I am powerful, like, um, it's just that in the past I've always seen those as uh, insults, like whenever somebody tells me that I'm aggressive, uh, or abrasive or any kind of word like that especially if you're a girl a woman excuse you excuse me <laughs> like those are insults nobody tells you that you're aggressive as a compliment and that's why i had those that's why i didn't have like a clear view of myself in relation to those things because of course i don't want to i don't want to be aggressive if that's an insult but I am. I am an aggressive, like, energy. Not again, not violent, but like, I do have an aggressive energy to me, and that's why I get things done. <laughs> like, that's why I like to make so much stuff, right? Um, so it's not again. It's not just. It's not an insult. It's just a description. It's just like. And so now that I've had like, I guess almost a year of training and time to process everything, it's like. I never had to be anybody else. I just had to channel who I am through kickboxing, and you know, in the in the in the in the arena of kickboxing. Um, but I don't have to be anybody else. I don't have to perform like anybody else. I don't have to perform differently than I, what I do in the gym. Um, and I feel like I actually did that when I was training for my fight i didn't train like how i always train like i would just like i don't know I, I i changed up the combos and i i thought i had to amp it up and you do have to amp it up but you don't have to change who you are i don't know if that makes sense like yeah i don't know I, like i remember in training throwing a lot of like one two one two one two well like i don't do that when i spar day to day like that's not necessarily um you know like i'm throwing more hooks for example when i spar uh with my teammates when i don't have a fight so why would i change it when i do have a fight 
And of course, like, I want to know those little things without having a fight, without fighting. So, like I said, I feel like in a way it was like I had to go through this experience. And I'm happy that I did it. I'm happy that I did it. Like, the last thing I want to do is just be scared to not compete again. So that's definitely why I'm competing this year. Because <laughs> like I said, I just have a vengeance. I just want to avenge my loss to myself. And... I want to have fun like like it, it's a crazy thing like i went out there and and i had a fucking fight in a ring <laughs> and yeah i want to do it again of course uh but better and yeah what else um of course i'm afraid i would be i would have to be a psychopath to not be afraid about having a fight i'm afraid about going to the gym sometimes like most of the time because all my training partners are good and i know they're gonna kick the shit out of me if i like mess up a single time even when i don't mess up they're probably gonna kick my ass so <laughs> um but that's what makes it exciting that's what makes it a sport and that's what makes it art like seth godin says so it doesn't really bother me like i feel like a lot of people around me um are really bothered by the fact that like it could go wrong um and it's like yeah so many things in life could go wrong and you could do nothing that is risky and life could still go wrong like i personally always think about frida kahlo like she was on a bus and a truck hit the bus or i don't i don't know i don't even know what hit the bus another car motorcycle i don't know something i i feel like it was a truck but i have no idea but the point being that frida kahlo was doing nothing out of the ordinary she was going on about her normal life and she had a tragic accident that left her bedridden for a very long time. And she was still, not, not only was she still able of being, to be an artist and succeed in life, but like she literally was doing nothing out of the ordinary, nothing risky. So you have no control over your life. Like you could go your whole life being safe and still fail or something catastrophic could happen so that's why i want to take the chance like to me this is an opportunity to use my dance skills slash movement fighting i feel like it builds my character as well and it gives me like discipline so i don't really mind it that it's like it's not a guarantee you know it's like you might embarrass yourself in front of everybody uh I have so whatever like I'm still here like I don't know whatever it's not a big deal of course I want to perform well um, but like I said it's because it's important to me to feel good and feel to like have fun while I'm performing um, but yeah let me know in the comments what has been the most traumatic experience you've been through <laughs> Uh, for me, it's definitely fighting. <laughs> Mostly because it was just such a weird out-of-body experience. And it's something so weird that you can't necessarily like communicate to everybody. A lot of people, especially when you, when I came back to the gym, for, I remember I was overly aware that certain people were unsure about how to approach the subject. Like it's really easy to discuss something if it like it, w it went well for you but not everybody knows how to approach the subject so like i haven't necessarily talked about my fight with a lot of people uh i mostly only talked about it with people that fight <laughs> um and of course my family um but yeah it's just such a weird experience like um traumatic is the best word that i can think of how to describe it <laughs> Uh, oh, something else that I forgot. I also learned like that my family's proud of me. This is so stupid, but like my family, like they, <laughs> of course they were worried, especially my mom. And when I came back, um, the first weekend that I went back to like say hi, um, I showed them my fight, and they literally played it on TV for themselves and later for like visitors. And they're literally sitting there cheering and like yelling at my opponent. <laughs> like, you fucking bitch. Uh, <laughs> every time like she would hit me. 
they're like, I think it's for the first time like I realized like they're proud of me. Which again is dumb because why wouldn't they be proud of me? Like of course they're proud of me as a human being. Um, but like I really saw it. I was like, <laughs> even though I freaking lost the fight, they were like, they were like proud of me. I don't know. It, it was that was probably the coolest thing. Um, yeah, th that was like really cool. At the end of the day, like that, that's what really matters to me. Like I'm really close to my family. I've realized. So. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you still are, subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination. This is a video that I known I had to make for a very long time because it's central to our discussion of power. How you feel about your own power, how you decide to behave about your own power. Um, of course, I know my channel is not about fighting, like kickboxing, but um, these are definitely like really important lessons. For us to discover about ourselves if we want to go on and like i don't know how build a business or just be like a, a good person or a, a well-developed person so that's why i'm sharing my story let me know in the comments your ideas your experiences anything um anything you want to tell me <laughs> i'll see you in the next video thank you for listening